The last time we talked about Keffels on the channel, we went through her entire online presence and were the first channel to properly cover her internet shenanigans, going over brand new evidence that was never seen before about this divisive internet figure. Since then, things haven't exactly gone any better for her, so today we'll be taking a dive once again and see what exactly has been going on since my last video. Shout out to the channel members like always, and if you'd want to support yourself, you can subscribe to my Patreon in the corner or YouTube memberships by clicking the join button. I hope you liked the video. Now let's get right back into the massive story that is Kefla's online career and see what we missed out on together. Nothing super interesting would go down after the release of my last video, though during a stream on October 18th, 2022, Keffels would seem a bit more erratic than usual as seen by her body language. Some people start to speculate if she was getting addicted to Adderall again as she had previously used a drug before, but given it was all speculation, there wasn't anything of substance yet. She would start to get a bit edgy with it on Twitter before deleting the tweet shortly after posting it, and then talk about how she just wants to chill out and play Overwatch 2 after going through all the doxing and whatnot within the last year or so. She'd also crack jokes about giving 7 year old children bathtub HRT, which given her prior affiliation to the DIY site that sold exactly that telling kids to not tell their parents on the packaging, it wasn't exactly a good look. Around this time, Keffels would also break up with her fiancé Alex, either because they just weren't feeling it, the public pressure was too much for them to handle, or a little bit of both. On October 20th, she announced she was going back to Canada and docs proof in her new place, saying she can now focus on the legal case she plans to submit against the London, Ontario Police Department. It was around this same time that people started to question her and her motives on Twitter, in which she would immediately try to victimize herself in a reply to the message in an attempt to make her fans feel bad for her. In an extension to that first message, she would also notably say she almost spent a decade living under the poverty line, yet if you remember, she's also gone on multiple overseas vacations as we've seen before, and not just simple ones, but ones like China and South Korea, which when taking all this into account makes for a very suspicious sounding claim of hers. Keffels would continue to say how she spent almost a decade under the poverty line and continue to imply she used to be poor in another couple posts later, but people bring up a stream from back on July 19th that year where she stated her family was blue collar and she never said she was poor, which given she's now saying this, it became pretty obvious she was just trying to victimize herself further online. And I still have more photo albums. Guys, sniffle, I grew up poor and I never have time to vacation. I mean, it's funny too, because I never claimed I grew up poor. I just said that I'm from a blue collar background and that's true. My dad got his uh, high school equivalency when he was 30. He had dyslexia and he fixed vending machines for a living. My mom works in a warehouse. Like that's blue collar. They work with their hands. They're not academics. That doesn't mean blue collar doesn't mean poor. <laughs> More people start to question her GoFundMe fundraiser and call her a fake person with the bad act. And in a stream around that time, she would say she won against Kiwi Farms despite the site still being up, notably acting very odd with her speech slurring very heavily and seeming out of it. I just joined Hello Everyone Couples. You look so pretty. Thank, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, um... Keffels would also end up leaking DMs showing that she was in contact with Chelsea Manning a transgender former U.S. Army soldier who leaked over 700,000 classified sensitive military documents to WikiLeaks back in 2010, going to jail before being pardoned by Barack Obama in 2017. She would also admit to being in contact with infamous streamer Vosh despite his name not even showing up in the leak, so let's add him to the list. On November 4th, Keffels would post a video link on Twitter saying that it would be her last post online for a while and also alleged that her YouTube was probably shadow banned for some reason. The video itself is mainly her talking about how she intentionally baited Kiwi Farms to harass her online and how the site is still up despite the whole drop Kiwi Farms campaign, saying how her mental health is at a very low point because of this and that she'll be taking a break from streaming and the internet due to all the stress she's currently under. She would continue to post how she put her life at risk and how people are going to keep going at her throat and how this is all ruining her mental health, and Destiny would go on to say he was still planning to sue her for the lies she spread around about him. Keffels will update her Patreon supporters about the legal case against the police, in which she says she plans on going through with it but is still busy unpacking at her new place and still getting over the breakup with her fiancé. While it wasn't anything people didn't expect to hear, there'd be another moment of Keffels seeming really out of it when answering someone's question, with more speculations of Adderall abuse coming out because of this. I feel, I feel pretty confident, but I think um, the, the one thing... Like the the one thing that I remember. Uh, oh wait, what the f am I saying? <laughs> People would also see her commenting on her Discord despite saying she was gonna take a break, and they would notice her liking tweets not even three days later after that announcement. 
She would then come back to Twitter herself and say it was her team that was using her account and tweeting through TweetDeck, but given how she seems to be on Discord and just not Twitter, it's within reason she was probably still online and was just saying stuff to not look like a loser. Despite this break announcement, Kefels would get back to streaming just under a week later, and again come back to Twitter once more after she saw something she didn't like and rant a bit about it. During a quarterly report, Cloudfair will lose company value on the stock market, and in said report, they had mentioned dropping Kiwi Farms led to significant adverse feedback and that they were aware of potential customers who decided not to use their services because of this, something that's interesting to note in the background. On November 8th, Keffels will launch up a 6 minute live stream. And the reason it was 6 minutes was because she seemed extremely out of it, so much that her roommate would come into the room and talk to her about it before shutting it off. Look, I'm proud of you, but you should, you should pick a better role model. Like, for instance, Spongebob, because like Spongebob's never done anything wrong, I don't think. Am I okay? Am I okay? Am I? Am I okay? Hmm? You want to say that again to my face, bitch? Why are you proud of- what the f*** is there to be proud of? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, fine, I'm super disappointed. Good. Join the club. Get, step in the f***ing line. What? Despite the glaring signs of some sort of substance abuse going on, Keffels would continue on like normal, such as trying to ratio Elon Musk but failing, only to try and repost it so more followers can see it until deleting them both in defeat. She would go on to make a TikTok account and stream some more, but during a stream she would accidentally reveal the name of someone named Ben Collins to the chat. New automatic payment from Ben Collins? Wait, Ben, wait, I shouldn't have said that out loud. Uh, whoever, whoever you are, in sh I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just outed, oh my god. It turns out Ben is one of the main journalists who covered her story on NBC, showing that he's now financially supporting her, be it a little bit of money or a lot of bit of money. The Quartering would report this to his followers on Twitter, and Ben himself will start to say that it totally wasn't him, guys, just trust him, bro, he's telling the truth, everybody. Keffels would reply and say it was just a donator's old name that wasn't properly updated and definitely not a journalist trying to lie about something to people, with the both of them running this narrative that Ben just can't stand listening to podcasts or streaming content and that's just a bunch of terminally online people looking way too deep into it. You know, just someone trying to impersonate Ben online as he said so himself at 10.40pm the night the news dropped, only for Keffels to now say it was the donor's old name 15 minutes later despite Ben giving a different story originally. Totally not worth looking into anybody. It's also totally not a coincidence that Ben just happens to inquire about deleting Twitter DMs just a day later after the incident. I mean like, come on guys, there's no way he's financially supporting Keffels after running a massive story about it, right? Some more miscellaneous Twitter posting from Keffels would be seen throughout the next few days, with her still cracking jokes about supplying miners with access to HRT in her Discord. Ben would continue to swear that it definitely wasn't him who was sending Keffels money guys, just trust him bro. And things would get quiet as Keffels would chill for a bit and not post on Twitter for a little over a week after going on vacation to the UK. You know, just cross continental vacationing after getting 100k to sue the police in her city. She would post another tweet showing off her time in the UK in early December and announce a return shortly after, officially returning to streaming on December 7th just a few days later. Nothing of much importance will happen for the next week, with Keffels mainly just streaming about whatever current political topic was going on and tweeting out a handful of stuff relating to that, but it will come out on December 14th that the London Ontario Police did a department investigation and concluded that they acted properly with her arrest back a few months ago. Keffels would give a quote to a journalist stating that she's happy changes are being made to make things better, but says she's not surprised the police investigated themselves and found nothing wrong and that it all could have been easier if they just did a couple phone calls before going to arrest her. Someone on Kiwi Farms would find the potential floor plan of her new apartment and find out that Keffels might have spent a little under 29k for her first year of rent, meaning that she had around 71,000 left to sue the police with if this was her place, and that's not including other expenses like food for example. Destiny would also confirm that Keffels got a cease and desist on December 2nd and that she said she was going to talk to a lawyer about it. She acknowledged receipt of the cease and desist on the 2nd. December 2nd, so it was three weeks ago. I don't know how long I'll let her float on that until I move to lawsuit. On December 22nd, she would announce she would start pursuing legal action against the police at the start of the new year, 
going on to tweet out a link to her stream and also call out people for calling her a lying grifter and scammer and such, before notably deleting that bottom post shortly after for some reason. For the next couple weeks, nothing of importance would really happen. People continue to call Keffels a grifter and reference the DIY HRT site and whatnot, but to be honest, it wasn't anything new. People would speculate she got dumped by her new partner on New Year's Day after they stopped following her, and she would tweet out about a week later that she's now single, confirming things as such. Destiny would also end up showing hesitancy on going through with the lawsuit around this time as well. However, it was soon after all this that Keffels would find herself in her first controversy where she wasn't seen in a positive light, and it all started with a simple livestream with the very known online figure. On January 17th, 2023, Keffels would start to talk with Keemstar on a public level, a figure that is looked upon very poorly on Twitter. This will cause people in her community to tweet out how he's a horrible person, that he's using her in this situation as bait, with some implying that she was stooping down to very low levels for content. She would still follow up with this stream to teach Keemstar about trans rights and such, before going on to tweet that it might have not been the best idea after all. While there's multiple moments that would cause Keffels to tweet this out loud, the most notable would be this one where Keemstar drops the line that would for sure cause controversy on that side of the internet. If my kid wanted to uh, start like a hormone therapy or something like that. Um, yeah. I just, I would be against it. I would. Given that some of her fan base was already mad that Keffels was working with Keemstar on her channel, they would start to get mad at her on Twitter which people such as The Quartering would start to contemplate defending her or not as the outrage is growing that much on the site. She would lose just under a thousand followers on Twitter because of this, in which she would start up a live stream and say she never realized Keemstar was just playing her because she's autistic. Other people getting mad saying like it was incredibly obvious it was a bit, um, and that's why they're mad at you. Have you considered that I might potentially be autistic as shit possibly? Has that ever, you know? This change in public perception about her will be swift, as a random Twitter account will post something making fun of her getting over a million views on the site in just a day. Keffels will end up accidentally leaking DMs on stream that show her doubting her career as she points out she can't average a thousand concurrent viewers, and her follower count will continue to bleed as she's starting to lose popularity on Twitter. YouTuber Stardust would also get banned and unbanned on YouTube too. Given her past issues with Keffels, some speculated it could have been her crazy fans trying to attack her, but this was nothing certain and it seemed to just be a coincidence. Keffels would also get into beef with streamer Bad Empanada, in which she would leak DMs he had with her that were not interesting at all, and once she calls herself ableist even if it could be a joke which only caused more people on Twitter to go against her. She would even argue with the random Twitter person after people try to cancel her for talking bad about communism, in which she would try to bait them into a debate and even went into their Twitch chat after they stopped replying on Twitter. Keffels most recent ex would actually be one of the people who came out of trash on her on Twitter, and she would even comment about it on stream saying how weird it was to see that. Interestingly, my ex decided to go after me on Twitter, which was fucking really uncomfortable. Like, I don't know why she decided, like, I am going to do, like, public Twitter beef with my ex. It's really weird because, like, she's really not smart. She's really, really, really fucking dumb. All this new negative attention towards her will culminate in a live stream on January 29th, in which she would keep calling people retarded alongside a handful of other edgy stuff. A quick one in chat if you're a retard. I just want to like do a quick survey here. All right, it looks like you know there's at least a few. There's at least a few. <laughs> okay, I saw someone in YouTube chat say it is ableism. Okay, and and then what? And then and then what? And then what? What do you like? First of all, what are you going to do about it? Second of all, shut up. Well, I personally don't care about her saying retard or laughing at jokes about it. Her majority of her Twitter fan base most certainly did. And things would only get worse for her as in a deleted video she would admit that she doesn't care about being right or wrong and that she doesn't care that she lies. I don't care. That's okay. That, that's the problem though. It's like I don't I actually don't care. Like I, I don't care. Like regardless if I was right or wrong, I actually just don't care. Those are the only two options and both of them involve you being a lying piece of shit snake. Very simple. Okay. I don't care. Simple as. I, d I don't care. <laughs> She would also make mention of Destiny's cease and desist and say that he hasn't done nothing yet because she thinks he doesn't want to give her any attention anymore. The month of January 2023 would end and there would be no update on her lawsuit with the police despite saying she would start it at the beginning of the year. And on February 3rd, Keffels would tell her chat to start running some gay ops on the Twitter account she doesn't like. Everyone here, if, if, you, if you want to, but you should, make a burner account on Twitter. Grab a random pick crew from Google. It's time to do some gay ops. She would even specify them to pretend to be black, and all this edgy behavior culminating in a Twitter thread exposing her for saying retard in the aforementioned gay op, 
And this would start to spread like wildfire on the website as more people started to chime in. She would even try to debate someone about what was going on. And when asked if she was ignoring questions, she would say since she's autistic, she doesn't see an issue with her saying retard in her stream. Again, I don't give a shit if she says retard or not, but she would lose a massive amount of followers because of this controversy in which she would try to twist things and call out one of the people going against her as she kept getting backed into a corner. Vos should even chime in on the situation going on. That's how big of a deal it became on that side of Twitter. Keffels would try to play off the situation by cracking jokes about her being Italian and the slurs attributed to them in a Twitter post. And throughout the week would announce her going on stream to goad in as many viewers at this newfound attention she was getting, even if it was negative. During the second stream, people were not having any of what she was saying, and she would continue to bleed followers over what was going on. She would also make a video called Taking Accountability in which she actually doubles down on what she was doing, making it clear she was not going to bow down to people on Twitter. Any attempts by her to crack jokes about her current controversy were failing on the website as people were making it very clear they did not like her at all during this situation. Keffels would say that she was bringing a guest onto one of her streams, only for them to say they never agreed to anything and called her out for lying to people to try and get easy views off their name. She would get so desperate for any sort of positive interaction she would even wipe her block list, showing just how much the controversy was starting to affect her. Despite this, she would continue to bleed followers and would even get a taste of her own medicine by users on the site now that her reputation was slowly falling into the gutter. It would even get crazier though, as it would turn out the person who initially made the tweet to cancel Keffels was a troll the entire time, and Keffels would immediately learn about this firsthand on a stream. Put forward with all the respect that a movement that tears itself to shreds over inconsequential shit. I'm thinking we're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. Keffels will start to play into her being autistic more on Twitter by adding the infamous autism hat into her profile picture. But people find an old tweet from a year ago with her saying she isn't autistic, with them now questioning if she's been lying about being autistic recently to simmer down the hate mob against her. She wouldn't do herself any favors as she would start to ask her subreddit to look for info on random people she was beefing with on Twitter, in which she would start to use this against her to make her look like an unhinged schizo trying to harass random people online. During this impending meltdown, more and more people online were starting to accept that Kiwi Farms is here to stay and that Keffels used the situation for money and attention towards herself. The drop Kiwi Farms Twitter account themselves would even comment about how Keffels is now turning into the very people that use this site, showing a video of her telling her fanbase to use that Reddit page to collect lore on people online. Do I still want to use the subreddit to collect lore on people? Absolutely. 100%. The next time I put a lore request up on the subreddit, I will be more specific. Throughout the stream, she seemed to be really off. Like this one moment where for a good 30 seconds, she just smacks a pack of cigarettes in her hand while looking in a no discernible direction. Keffels would then put out a tweet after it ended saying how it was such a great stream because she wasn't walking on eggshells before going on to say that making fun of someone for saying stuff could cause him to commit one day, with people immediately catching on she's trying to insert herself into this and noticing her attempt at baiting her own life because she wants to say retard on stream. She will clarify that she doesn't condone doxing or any stuff of that nature and that she just wants info on people to cover for future videos. Saying she has 200 controversies in her books and names off a couple of them for people to see. Someone will also notice she started following a bunch of poker and gambling pages on Twitter which raised suspicion. As why would someone who got 100k through suspicious means be following a bunch of gambling stuff? Someone talking about this recent Keffels controversy would say some IRL friends of hers DM them and said she's been acting out because she relapsed into addiction alongside some other unimportant stuff. Which given the 100k was just sitting around as far as people could tell, was a recipe for disaster if true. A friend would eventually come and say that it happened soon after the swatting from the police and that they try to help her out to no avail. Eventually telling her she needs to get offline to fix herself as they say Keffels didn't read what they said to them and called them names and unfollowed them. While it wasn't 100% confirmed or anything just yet and just rumors, Keffels supposed editor would come out and criticize people for making the story public. And eventually, Keffels herself would retweet something defending her for her addiction, now confirming it to be true to the public. The initial leaker would delete their post and make an apology saying they were sorry for leaking all this. But it was far too late as Keffels herself would come out and admit she was on something and that she's dealt with addiction in the past before so she knows how hard it is to talk about it. She would then say how if people truly wanted her to get better, they would show compassion. Before saying she's looking into rehab again and that she'll be dipping off Twitter as she works on a video to explain what was going on. She would then apologize for this recent erratic behavior due to this drug addiction and say she doesn't expect any apologies as well in a quote tweet soon after. After this news came out, people start to speculate on what she was hooked on, quickly putting together that Keffels most likely used the GoFundMe money to fuel her addiction and reminisce on the absolute fleece of the century. It would also come out that Keffels grew her Twitter fanbase by convincing someone who owned the account PeopleBaiter to give her access to it, 
only in return to lock them out and use it to retweet her stuff online, eventually turning it into the Keffel's tweet account I knew of today. Destiny will end up learning about the addiction and have this to say about it on stream. I think Keffel spent the 100k on get... drugs. Unironically, I think she did. On February 21st, Keffel said announced she would be going to rehab to get her stuff sorted out and that she'll be taking a 30 to 45 day break from social media, thanking her friends for sticking by her and saying that the channel will be active as her editors will post old content to keep things flowing. As people would speculate when she would come back and what she was hooked on still, someone would find an old stream clip of her talking with YouTuber Shu on head about how in the past she would dox people before she got famous online, showing that that old winter situation we've talked about in my last video wasn't a one-off like some had assumed. And when they started popping up in my city, uh, we made a doxing list. We found out like all their home addresses, all of their names, and like we scared the shit out of them until they stopped uh, showing up to protests. Keffels would keep true to her word and stay off the internet as far as people could tell, with her editors indeed repurposing old streams into content to keep the channel afloat while she was gone. Speculations would continue to float about, but for all intents and purposes it seemed that she was actually getting the help she so desperately needed. All they could do now was wait and see when she would return to the internet, and most importantly, see if she would give people the answers they yearned for having to do that 100k GoFundMe. On March 31st, 2023, Keffels would return back to the internet after her month and a half break, showing people she wasn't fully ready to return but she was still doing better. She would then be seen chatting in Vosh's stream talking with the users about whatever was going on that day on April 2nd. On April 15th, she would announce that she was officially back online after getting back from rehab, posting an update on Patreon saying she'll get right back into everything with a Patreon exclusive stream on April 30th in a few weeks. She would even update her profile picture on Twitter around this time as well, and while she wasn't active, it was clear she was planning her comeback sometime soon. Somebody would find an account on Twitter named Borpa Spinny made that month, an account similarly named to an emote on Keffel's Twitch stream. While the account was locked, replies to it make reference to her recent issues with people policing her language and mentions of how people clip the worst parts of her livestreams and make her look bad, stuff that Keffels had been dealing with recently before going to rehab. It was a bit suspicious that it might have been her, but nothing concrete would come out about it, as there were some far more important things brewing behind the scenes that would soon come to light. On April 21st, 2023, Keffels would confirm that she filed a free to make human rights complaint against the London, Ontario police around eight months after the incident happened, inching ever closer to her goal of eventually suing them. Her lawyer Justin Anisman would come in and add a new allegation to the mix that the police allegedly groped her now, which given this story has been changing since the very beginning it was told, was only making both their chances of getting anywhere with the complaint ever so slimmer in the process. Someone would assert their belief it didn't happen, and Justin would notably only reply in question about the misgendering and not the much worse claim they just put on the police in typical sleazy lawyer speak. An article posted that very day would go into more detail about the case, such as stating that Keffels wanted 75k for injury to her dignity and 50k for loss of income, you know, despite making over 100k from that GoFundMe she put up just a few months ago online and still was making money from her Twitch streams and Patreon after it all happened. Even people on Reddit were starting to call her an opportunistic grifter and even a straight up bully, with others wondering why out of all the people online did she have to be one of the faces of the transgender community. Nothing really interesting will happen soon after the announcement, with the only notable thing being that Tipster made a video defending her now that Keffels finally took a small step into some form of legal action over half a year after the incident. She would even put out the first new audio clip of her since two months ago that is basically just her stating what her goal is. Part of what I'm hoping that can come out of this human rights complaint is that officers of the London Police Service will have to use body cameras in interactions with trans members of the public to ensure compliance with the Human Rights Code, to make sure that they are accountable, not only to trans people, but to the entire community. She would get back to tweeting like normal, such as talking about a recent rehab trip and such, immediately trying to get back to ratio people such as Leafy is here retweeting herself at one point to get more traffic and even going to Hassanabi to try and get him to join the brigade. Her attempt at epically owning Leafy would fail as she would realize that her influence on Twitter had fallen off significantly in the past few months, eventually deleting the ratio attempt altogether out of embarrassment and shame. Keffels would end up purging all her tweets from September 2022 onward soon after this for whatever reason she might have had, and would start to promote that April 30th Patreon exclusive stream some more as the days tick closer and closer. The stream would eventually go down, and a few days later she would upload a clipped up version of it on her YouTube channel for people to enjoy. She would stream from a friend's place in Ireland soon after moving there and get into the details on her addiction, saying that in her early 20s she got hooked on those and and that the recent situation was laced with amphetamine. Over time, I started to develop a tolerance to that. I started doing more and more opiates, and then eventually I started doing so much that I was running out of my prescription. I started doing that a lot. 
And then eventually what happened was that my ex found out that I was going to my dealer's house to buy hair. I started drinking, and then as more and more shit started happening, I started doing at the start of 2023. Eight days into a bender, I found out that the coke that I was doing was cut with meth. So for eight days straight, I was doing coke and meth. She would then blame her coke addiction for why she started saying retard in public. And as she got so down, she started doing a plethora of stuff as she spiraled out of control just before her friends found out and were able to get her help. And I was so irritable that I just had to pause for a second and I started calling them retards. And that kicked off so much shit. Keffels would then get into the human rights complaint she made recently, showing the entire document for the chat to see. It's a long read going over stuff we know about already, so there's no need to go too deep into it. But the claims of her losing 25% of her income was the most interesting, as it's pretty insane to think she was making more money before her peak and before the GoFundMe came out, but I digress. The rest is mainly to document painting Keffels as a victim and such, with people getting the proof of her asking for 125k in damages and for the police to get body cams installed with interactions with transgender people in public. She would also tweet and delete a post on the early morning of May 1st saying she knows the people who run a DIY HRT site now given Chloe aka Bob posting was allegedly away from the internet due to harassment after the H3 podcast as she said before. Nothing interesting will happen for the next few days. Tips are a tweet about his new internet friend and a human rights complaint. Keffels would officially graduate from rehab on May 9th just a few days after getting back to the internet. She would get back to streaming regularly and would upload clips on her YouTube channel, but they were notably more boring than usual and because of this she wasn't pulling a healthy number of views in both aspects. She would even interact with the Voss subreddit a bit asking them about some future video plans she had in mind and what they thought about them. Keffels would continue this arc of beginning anew by apologizing to people she's done dirty in the past like Bad Empanada to unsurprising results for example, and would even use the social media site Blue Sky to promote Catboy Ranch merch, which given the extremely negative connotation the name has as some people use it to say she was grooming children, was a pretty strange investment to see from her. She would go on to say she was getting a visa to live in Ireland with their friend around the end of May, and she and her simp tipster would run some poor bay to try and get people to believe they had a falling out in their friendship. She would even try to bait Sneeko into responding to a troll question in an attempt for internet attention, but he wouldn't respond knowing not to take the bait. While Tipster would continue to burn the bridge with his old commentary bros on his own time, Keffels would get approved for her visa that had officially moved to Ireland by the end of June. She and Keemstar go at it a bit after she made fun of him and he replied with a picture of that crazy white powder, in which she would say he only goes after young girls because they're ignorant to him being a loser. During this rather pointless drama, a mod of hers would come out and say that Kevils did indeed use some of the GoFundMe money to purchase drugs, which at this point wasn't exactly shocking to hear. Nothing exactly interesting will happen for the rest of June to be honest, though sometime towards the end of the month she would accidentally leak her YouTube stats and show she was only pulling 700 bucks that month, showing that things weren't looking too hot for her comeback on that side specifically. In a stream around this time she'd also admit to being a cuck too, which is pretty funny. I have been in a relationship where I watch my partner have sex with another person. But I'm not a cuck. It's like, I'm not- Keffels would announce the comeback of the Catboy Ranch Discord server because that's a very smart brandy move to make. And Tipster would play into it because she's his new best friend online now. Catboy Ranch 2.0 will launch on July 3rd for her followers to come and join for whatever she had planned. And three days later, she uploaded upload a video talking about her close friend Vosh. A video that isn't too important all things considered just yet. She would end up getting into an argument with someone on Twitter named Ryan Beard and say how they do poor research or them asking for the full link to the clip they're talking about, in which Keffels would say it's behind a paywall and try to get him to pay her money to see the full clip. Ryan would then comment on this slimy behavior trying to belittle him while hiding stuff behind a paywall, only for her to try and flip it and say she now would have just given it to him if he had just asked, with him ending things off pointing out how shady she's been about this entire interaction. Keffels would also get embroiled in a racism controversy sometime in July, in which after a content creator named Soul Bunny would move things over to their Patreon, Keffels herself would try to still keep track of him by donating the minimum amount to see what was going on. More people try to push this against her by showing someone in her Discord server cracking an edgy joke about a cup of noodles with a little white hood going on, but this is clearly just a joke. And not Keffels or the person cracking the joke or anybody else is being racist, people on Twitter are just morally grandstanding and being nitpicky to feel better about themselves. She would go to a local Pride celebration around this time as well in Belfast, and in early August to drop over 1k for someone's GoFundMe, showing that she still has some good income in her bank account remaining, or she's bad with her money. Things would drone on for a bit, with Keffels uploading her first attempt at a video essay on her channel, a two-hour dive into the Young Turks political brand and its downfall on the internet in recent times. 
The video would do alright given the circumstances and get around 40k views in the first day, but people then see that it was age restricted, meaning that all the potential ad revenue was in the gutter and that the loads of work was basically for nothing now. She'd understandably get upset with this as any content creator would, and it seems her pleas for YouTube to change this fell on deaf ears as the video is still age restricted as of today. Tipster would congratulate Kefels for getting to 50k subscribers, she would announce a two-week break in mid-August, and she would shut down her old Discord to encourage people to pay up and move to Catboy Ranch 2.0 as the month wrapped up. She would return to streaming in early September and continue on with her life, and in late September the biggest shock would happen, as Keffels would not only be seen hanging out with her friend Vosh, but also her sworn enemy Destiny, the guy she slandered in a career she tried to ruin over a year and a half ago now. While it was indeed interesting to see him hanging out with her given the circumstances, this was the first sign of a possible mending of their tumultuous online relationship and letting bygones be bygones. By this point in time, it seemed that Keffels had finally started to turn the quarter and get herself out of the damaging cycle she got herself into in the first place. Sure, she heavily damaged her career back at the beginning of the year, but it was October now and she was managing to stay out of controversy all things considered. However, even though she was doing fine on the surface, things are starting to brew up behind the scenes. As not only did nobody have any idea where the GoFundMe money was going to as if you remember, the human rights complaint was free to make, it also seems she had some other stuff to deal with at the moment. In early October 2023, Keffel's ex-fiancé Alex, now known as Althea, the one she got to tell another alteration of the story how the police swatting incident went down and the one she broke up with shortly after, came out on Twitter to say that Keffel's was emotionally abusing them throughout the relationship together. They were going to say how Keffels will lose it on them for no discernible reason asking about self-employment stuff and that at one point she straight up tried to pay him off to disappear less than a week after she asked him to marry her. They were going to leak text messages between them, showing Keffels telling them how they snap because Althea doesn't respect her boundaries and Althea saying that she doesn't understand what they did wrong and were just asking a question about self-employment stuff. Althea will show further down how Keffels started to question if they think she's an abuser or not before getting into an argument about the self-employment stuff and Keffels ranting on about how they never give her the boundaries they ask for and questioning why she's getting pinned as a bad person. Althea would apologize for waking her up and Keffels would say how they don't remove herself from situations and such. It's things that end off with Althea telling her how they're trying to respect her boundaries better given the stressful circumstances and Keffels trying to put some partial blame on Althea saying how their opsec isn't as good as hers and they both hurt each other based on their actions. Althea would even keep a log of the things Keffels will allegedly say to them throughout their relationship together, and while it's difficult to read given their handwriting, you can make out a couple sentences if you look hard enough. The most important stuff can be seen on the bottom left corner on August 16th, with Althea writing down stuff Keffels allegedly told him, such as, I'm the only one who's ever reasonable, you have terrible abandonment issues, and I can't say anything without making you cry. A former mod of hers would give their condolences and say how Keffels told them they were the abuser when talking about him, and Althea would go on to say how Keffels had most of the power in their relationship and that they only admitted to being problematic because they feared going homeless as their relationship fell apart. Things that end off with Althea saying how Keffels is willing to use her power against vulnerable people and them taking the conversation to DMs at the former Keffels mod. Now these are just allegations against Keffels as nobody will ever know the truth as to how behind the scenes are like beyond the leaked text messages. At that, they're not anything really and mainly just looking like a typical misunderstanding between two lovers that got a bit heated. And the only thing worth taking into consideration is that Althea was willing to tell a different story about the swatting incident for Keffels way back a year ago, so seeing them come out about this now and accuse Keffels of abuse was unexpected. If you ask me though, I personally don't think there's anything to this as plenty of people get into relationship issues and I don't like to pretend as if it's a huge deal because relationships are very nuanced, especially without any context given the public doesn't know about their dynamic at all. After this, things wouldn't get any better for her, as some messages will leak out of Keffels making some strange jokes about underage children and how she wouldn't do Hassan Piker if he was a child because he's Turkish, and even though they read like edgy jokes, it was still something her detractors latched onto to try and make her look as bad as possible. Around this time, some random cracked out guy will also upload a video trying to get some action from her. That which isn't too important, but pretty funny to watch, so here you go. What's up Keffels? You may not recognize me. But do you know Comrade Rose X? It's okay though, I'll take care of you. Breakfast in bed. Woo! I will tear that up. On October 18th, 2023, the London, Ontario police will conclude their investigation and find no evidence of groping that Keffel's claim went down in her human rights complaint she sent earlier that year. They would however produce a system that flags addresses of people who were previously swatted as to consider any calls about them under more scrutiny, so at least those who have dealt with swatting attempts before won't have to worry about the police showing up to their places often anymore, which is good. Less swatting is always something to celebrate about, so it's nice to see something good come out of all this even if it wasn't in Keffel's favor. 
A former mod will end up nuking Keffel's old Discord, so she would promote Catboy Ransom more to those who hadn't paid up to join yet. And Tipster would continue to defend his new best friend on Twitter whenever people started to say mean things about her for whatever reason he has. Sometime in early December, she would even come out and say she was also popping Zans back in early 2023, notably saying she bought it through the darknet, now giving people confirmation how she got a hold of the substances to begin with. She also admitted more to trying to dox the Kiwi Farms user Winter as seen beforehand, so at least she was owning up to being a doxer, I suppose. On December 16th, 2023, Caffles would start up a livestream titled I Was R***ed, in which she goes on to say that her ex-fiance Althea did exactly that to her during their former relationship together. The most important parts from the stream was when she would go on to say that the reason she got engaged to them was because she feared she was going to die after the swatting, and that she left Canada to escape Althea apparently and would admit she liked journalists about the true reason. The reason that I asked to marry her in the first place wasn't out of love. It was because after the swatting, I thought I was going to die. And the truth is... I left the country because of my ex and because I was scared of my ex. Because my ex was abusive and abused me emotionally and yelled at me and consistently coerced me into sex. That's why. That's why I left. There's also some leaked text between the two, but one set is of particular interest. As Althea asks if she will confirm that she'll follow through on getting them a bed in the GoFundMe money in specific, with Keffel stating, I'm not gonna follow through on anything. That was a very choice thing to say as it heavily implied she wasn't gonna follow through on illegal action with the police, and given the lack of transparency with where the money was going in the whole drug addiction situation, it would only add more fuel to the fire against her. Althea would respond saying Keffels is running a smear campaign against them but that they have things documented behind the scenes to prove their innocence, and we're going to say how Keffels let her guinea pig drown to death and was negligent with the rest of them. While it was true that the guinea pig did drown, Keffels has gone on record saying it was an accident when they took a phone call and stepped out for a minute, and given we don't know the exact details of this plus the new situation of negligence, I'm not going to put this against her as it's a he said she said type of situation. With that being said though, Keffels has already shown herself to be an extremely unreliable narrator and nobody really knows what Althea is like as a person, so at the end of the day it came off like more Keffels saying outlandish and potentially false things about people for internet pity. Keffels had even come out saying her discourse server that she cheated on Althea with another live streamer before they came out as trans, and alleges the reason Althea came out was because Keffels came out as a lesbian and Althea wanted to stay with her so they came out to keep the relationship going. She also went into further detail in her relationship with Chelsea Manning, saying that she hired her security company last year during the doxing stuff and that the plan was to move her to Tenerife, a small Spanish island, that her hackers are apparently in jail right now, and that she was supposed to talk to the Department of Homeland Security but that plan fell through after getting sick. Around Christmas time, Keffels has started up a livestream leaking all her DMs at Hassan Piker, burning bridges at one of the most influential people on her political side of the internet for whatever reason she may have had. Now to be fair, this situation was nothing of importance and just another example of her making extremely bad decisions with her internet career, but something else came out during this time that added yet more doubt to her already very shaky word of mouth about Althea. During the stream when talking about Althea, Keffels mentioned how she was up for 24 hours before the H3 podcast episode she was on because she broke up with him that day. I had stayed up for over 24 hours um, when I went on the H3 podcast because that was the day I broke up with Althea. Ellen and I drove um, Althea to the Dublin airport and back before I had to jump on that stream. The podcast episode is dated September 9th, 2022. And given she was in Ireland when it went down, that means on September 9th or maybe even the early morning of the 10th, she broke up with Althea and drove them to the airport and back. However, Althea will post their flight logs, showing them starting their flight to Ireland on September 8th and then arriving on the 9th, meaning they got there that very day. To add to that, Keffel showed off messages between her and her suspected lover Ellen three days later, September 12th, showing that she was happy until Althea showed up and that she's sorry for bringing their messy relationship issues around and that she's contemplating breaking up with them. Ellen would notably recommend that things could help if the two of them stayed in a hotel together, meaning that Althea was still in Ireland on the 12th and wasn't flown back to Canada yet despite what Keffel said on stream. Nine days later on the 21st, Keffels would confirm they broke up, meaning that between September 12th to the 21st, Keffels officially broke up with Althea and not on the 9th like she told her viewers on stream. This was interesting to see, not necessarily because people were shocked Keffels is lying as she already has a track record of that, but the fact she lied about something so mundane and pointless. 
She isn't being vague about it either, as she ties her and Ellen driving Althea back to the airport before going on the H3 stream as a catalyst of events. Yet as we now know, they actually broke up between the 12th and the 21st instead of the 9th. However, I don't think she might be lying on purpose, as it's possible she's rather misremembering due to her drug usage throughout the years. Like, think about it. She's talking about something from over a year ago, and after they broke up, she got extremely hooked on stuff and had to go to rehab for it, and on top of that, she's already had a history of substance abuse as well. It very well could be possible she simply isn't capable of remembering stuff well. However, this is not an excuse for this, as this isn't something like misremembering a funny story like a bar fight, for example. Keffel's made an extremely serious claim that can ruin Althea's life, and the fact she might not even be able to properly recollect and explain serious stories like this due to her brain not working right on top of already being a known liar did not help her out whatsoever. The rest of the year wouldn't really have anything interesting save for a few events. The first would be Hassan reacting to her leaking their messages and basically just making fun of her for trying to stir up drama. But the next would be more interesting, as Kevils have confirmed she bought her drugs through Bitcoin and showed a screenshot saying it was around 2200 to 2300 Canadian that she spent in total, making it just under 1750 USD. Given this new revelation, people started to look into her Bitcoin address to get some answers. Meanwhile, Keffels is planning something big to kick off 2024, joining forces with a very well-known figure in internet lore in an unexpected yet very interesting crossover event. On January 14th, 2024, the most documented person on the internet, Chris Chan, would announce he was going on a live stream with Keffels in just two days. People would speculate what Keffels' intentions were, but things would slightly shift away as she would also announce that Althea sent a cease and desist her way for the recent stuff she's been saying about him. She'd read it out for the chat to see, showing how Althea and their counsel were asking her to take the video down she made on them and that she'll refrain from providing any contact details about them from then onwards or face the consequences. She would then say she's not taking any video down and that they're just trying to intimidate her, showing how the email had a typo to try and tarnish her credibility to her audience and also saying Althea was lying about her online. Needless to say, um, I'm not taking any video down. This is an intimidation tactic. Decease and desist. The paralegal who sent the cease and desist couldn't even spell cease and desist. That's how serious this is. Because of Althea making false allegations against me very publicly. She'd also mentioned she has a lawyer dealing with legal stuff found to do with the London, Ontario police, implying she was still looking to sue them after their failed efforts at the human rights complaint. Keffels would tell her fans to not contact or mention Althea at all no matter what in order to keep things under control as much as possible. Althea would end up setting up a GoFundMe to help her sue Keffels, and the time for the Christian interview would come but nothing was happening. A mod would then confirm it was happening off stream instead of on stream like people were expecting, and Keffels herself would confirm later on Twitter that she'd be uploading it on her channel as soon as possible. Later that same day, the interview would be uploaded, giving people a 35 minute dive into the recent life of Chris Chan now that he was a free man. Unfortunately, the interview is rather boring and drab, as it's mainly stuff that people already know about him and more of the same, with Keffel sounding noticeably quiet during the majority of the runtime and even her audio not lining up with her mouth movements at points. There was an interesting moment, however, where Keffel's carefully crafted her question in a way that was meant to say that trolls and haters are trying to convince Chris that his comics are real, only for Chris to expectedly go on to say they were real in one of the craziest minutes of rambling I've ever seen on the internet. What they wanted you to do, they were trying to manipulate you into believing that the like your cartoons, your comics were real and that you had mystical powers and there was a dimensional merge happening where you could go to Quickieville. Mm. Okay, well, for, for, for firstly, it's pronounced Quickville. You just say CWC like it's spelled like the word quick. Uh, but secondly, um, no, they were pretty much affirming what I already knew long before be they, before they came, because you look at the multiverse, anything and everything is possible in existence. And just, you know, I literally have been to the other half of our, of our Earth that was divided long ago in 1389 AD by Merlin the Magician and two other sorcerers by order of King Arthur herself. Just dividing the, just dividing the magic and the fantastical overpowered individuals and creatures into one ha into one dimension and then the earth that we on the majority that only has like look so much magic in it into the other and the merge is happening where the two earth halves are coming back together and we're all going to be fully we're all going to be fully tangible coexistence uh, which we have been for a long time because there's been that tangibility fail in between us but it's thinning even more so. We're able to see everything and everyone more clearly. They would finally get into the incest situation. As for those who don't know, Christian has sex with his own mother and was in jail for two years before being acquitted due to a lack of evidence. 
With a notable thing to point out here is that he was never proven innocent, just acquitted. Nothing of interest would come out of this, however, as it was just more the same in Chris trying to convince people he didn't do it. Which, let's be real here, given everything that's come out on the internet about it, it is more than likely that it did happen. There never was anything like that that happened between Barbara and I. Period. Keffels will then say that after Chris went to jail that Kiwi Farms got bored and went after her because of said boredom, showing yet another glimpse of her ego slipping through to try and tie herself to something completely unrelated to her. Because once you were, while you were in jail, they didn't have you to talk about and they were looking for new people to talk about. And that's when they found me. The rest isn't of much importance, with Chris mainly just saying he plans to make new pages to his Sonic True comic and get his life rolling once more. Thanking Keffels for taking down Kiwi Farms despite the site being up to this very day. The interview was overall seen as a bit of a failure as it wasn't really interesting, and people only used this as ammo against Keffels and referred to this as the biggest meeting the two of Kiwi Farms' biggest and honestly the internet's biggest old cows ever. Some people find out right after this that she originally went under the name Kaylee before choosing Claire as we know her by now. And the new negative attention towards her way would cause her to say how progressive people are now starting to harass her. That these people have no principles and just want Twitter likes hating on whatever's popular. And that she's been clean since last year and please her to trolls to stop saying heinous things as it affects her fans. Keffels would also launch up the Wigglerpedia around this time as well. A personal wiki to consolidate information surrounding her brand and online antics. This would go south almost instantly as trolls started to pile in a related forum site and post some crazy shit in it. With n-word f-word leading the pack in this attempt at derailing the website. Chaser Tipster would also start to make his presence known within the ranks of this clan, and N-Word Strangler would go nuts as well in his trolling attempts to mess with everyone using the site. Her wiki page would eventually get edited as well to deface and say a bunch of crazy things about her and such, with the revival war going on with changes being made the very second as trolls and mods fought for control of the page. The forum trolling would continue on for the rest of the night as Keffels is asleep during all this, when more and more people joining such as a random guest spamming a bunch of Nikocado Avocado's OnlyFans pictures in multiple threads he made. It turns out this all started on the website Soyjack Party that was responsible for the raiding and trolling, and the immense trolling from the Shardy would eventually lead to this Keffels Farms forum going offline within the 24 hours it was launched. The wiki itself would get cleaned up, and people would notice some of the sources used for some of the pages linked to Kiwi Farms itself, which given that Keffels used to brag about taking down the site and how it's evil and such, it's just another gem of a post of this immensely ironic thing to see. Just a few days after the end of the forum and less than a week later, the Wiggler Peter would officially go offline on January 25th, 2024, ending this short yet entertaining and eventful saga in everyone's lives. Keffels would announce in her Discord server this is due to security concerns, but given the circumstances it could be just that, the trolling, or a mixture of both going on all at once. She would notably talk about how she needs to take a break from making the political and drama content she currently does because she hates it and that she enjoys only building the community she currently has, saying she'll be working on other stuff. This would turn out to be a true crime slash mystery slash ARG channel that had nothing to do with the Keffels brand, and soon enough she would announce this newfound project to be the Scared Awake YouTube channel. Keffels would continue to reiterate online that she's done with the internet drama and the fighting and negativity that comes with it, saying she's willing to lose her fanbase but she's been feeling much happier than ever making this move. However, things would get worse for her as a Twitter user named Rain would post a note ending themselves on February 4th, 2024, in which Keffels is named as one of the perpetrators who apparently was calling her GoFundMe for money to get HRT a complete grift alongside another well-known individual, Brianna Wu, and others. Keffels would say she never called Rain a grifter or tried to sabotage her GoFundMe and that she must have been fed bad info, saying she considered her a friend and hoped she's doing okay and such. As far as their friendship was like, they met at the beginning of 2023 but seemed to have a small falling out in November that year after Keffels unfollowed Rin according to her word. Given there's no evidence of Keffels ever talking with Brianna in a group chat or trying to run some sort of op on Rin, it would be reckless for me to say this was Keffels and the other people Rin talked about did something because as far as we can see there really isn't any sort of proof if they actually did anything or not. It looked like Keffels name was wrongfully being dragged in the mud as far as the situation was going down, but this would have slowed down her Twitter usage as she would confirm she was going to marry Ellen soon and when replying to YouTuber Willie Mac show about the lawsuit as there hadn't been any updates on it for a good while now, she would notably reply and instantly delete a tweet saying that the papers had been processed and were waiting for tribunal, saying it could take 2-6 to six years to happen. Rina also ended up getting the help she needed after a friend found her alive, so thankfully things seemed to be simmering down and the situation was finally getting under control after the eventful past few days. Keffels would move on from this and upload her first video to the Scared Awake channel on February 6th, a 17 minute dive into the Paris catacombs and its history and whatnot. It's not the craziest video ever created and isn't necessarily bad, all things considered, and even if it was outside the normal kind of content she makes for her viewers, the effort was noticeable and it seems she was actually willing to turn this new leaf for herself and make content she enjoys to research online now. 
Tipster would even hop by and drop a comment supporting his best internet friend with her new venture as well, giving her words of encouragement to keep pushing ahead with this new direction of content. It seemed that this new content was going to be the catalyst for an uncertain but hopeful 2024 for Caffles. Sure, 2023 started on a pretty bad note before getting pretty quiet up until the end, and while 2024 started a lot rougher than she expected with her Chris Chan interview flopping all things considered, her change in content to focus on horror stories on the Scared Awake channel and the stuff she enjoyed talking about is always a good sign of someone trying to better themselves. Well yeah, majority of her audience on the Keffels channel were sitting by waiting to see how she plans to keep the Keffels brand itself alive. Things are still just barely kicking off so everyone still had time to sit back and see if she would truly drop all the internet drama farming content, or if she would get back to her old ways. Of course this runtime isn't over just yet, as Keffels decided to involve herself in what is one of the most controversial moments of her entire career, and something that I'm sure most of y'all are very aware of by now. On February 7th, 2024, just three days after the Rin situation, political streamer Vasha accidentally revealed a folder he saved on his computer, a folder that included NSFW Lolly and drawn bestiality images on it for the world to see, showing everyone that he's sick in the head and possibly a pedo. We've gone over it already on the channel before, so go check out that video if you want more info. Now most of the internet would start to go after him because this is really disgusting stuff, and some of those people were Ethan and Hila Kleiner, the H3 podcast, in which they would post a handful of videos showing their millions of audience members how gross the man is. For those that remember, Keffels has gone on record to call people that consume lolly material pedos in the past way back when she was on that Catboy Ranch Twitter account, showing her beliefs when it comes to those drawings. Well, on February 9th, Keffels had put out a video talking about the Vosh situation and mainly just getting everything together chronologically, but once she gave her opinion on what was going on, that's where things started to get interesting here. I've known Vosh for a long time, and don't think he is a pedophile. What I do think is that he is at times rather careless, both in not knowing the source material of the porn he was consuming, and also in keeping porn on his work computer, which, as a live streamer, was just asking for disaster. As you might have caught there, Kevil said she believes Vosh isn't a pedo, yet she's also said in the past she believes people who consume that content are exactly that, meaning she was bending the rules for a friend of hers rather than staying solid with her beliefs. While everybody is a hypocrite in their own way, when it comes to something as nasty and disgusting as what Vosh was caught with, it's not your typical small issue that doesn't really matter, but something that is very concerning and disturbing to see, especially for someone like Keffels who is a political streamer and by proxy needs to have a strong moral code as hypocrisy is a major thing people use against each other in those spaces online. Tipster end up commenting about Ethan and say how he's a bad man for showing out of context clips about Vosh and stuff, showing him blatantly defending Vosh for what happened. Keffels would agree with Tipster and start to defend Vosh alongside saying how they invited her on their podcast years ago and telling the H3 crew to do better. Ethan wouldn't take kindly to see these two defending Vosh and start to call both of them out on his Instagram stories for the world to see, bringing a whole lot more eyes to both her and Tipster's online antics. Keffels would delete her tweets and start to defend herself saying she wouldn't defend Vosh as she believed he was a pedo and that she wants to discuss things instead of just being put on blast to millions of people online. There'd be a lot more deleted tweets from her during this time period, such as her saying how she defended Ethan during the whole Hassan beef he had and that she expects the same charitability in return how she has his number or try to contact him through that to quell the flames between the two, and even her trying to bring up her gender identity into the situation saying that no one should pedo jacket trans people, clearly upset that people are now calling her one for defending Vosh. Keemstar would start to spread the news around to his millions of followers on Twitter, and Keffels would start a new Twitter account saying how she hates live streaming and that she'll be making scripted stuff now as well to make her less money, she'd rather do that as it's better to write things down than send them out loud without putting any thought into it. Also stating that she's tired of all the drama despite literally inserting herself into this one on her own volition. She would then start up a live stream between her and Tipster to react to the new episode of the H3 podcast dedicated to Vosh. That which isn't interesting at all and mainly just a cult fest between the two of them. Keffels would then try to imply that Ethan is anti-LGBT by saying her community that is mostly trans people are pedos in a failed attempt to get some heat off her back and right onto him instead. Saying how he should talk with Jordan Peterson again after all this that's going on right now as a way to try to epically own him. People started to crack jokes about the way she tries to twist things into transphobia anytime she's met with controversy, going on her all to say how she hates blood sports and is never to post anything on her main account because people react the same way, showing how she's aware of what she got herself into but can't seem to control herself. Keffels would then go after fellow transgender leftist political content creator ContraPoints for talking shit about her over a year ago, saying she posted this message on screen after she relapsed on drugs. However, if you remember, nobody knew she was on anything until February 19th that year, and Contra's post is on February 7th during the whole retard discourse that went down, meaning that Keffels is trying to lie and manipulate the narrative a year later in an attempt to change history and go after someone she dislikes online. She would also get into a spat with Keemstar again after she demanded they pay her 200 bucks to show up on his podcast, calling him some names and leaving shortly after not getting what she wanted from him. She would call Boogie2988 some names as well, 
and will continue to go after ContraPoints saying how she loves to befriend traffickers and pedos after failed United States presidential nominee Hillary Clinton was over at her place one day. Careful to take a crack at defending Vash on YouTube with a new video uploaded on February 16th, showing that she wasn't backing down anytime soon. The video will open up with a tribute to Tony Winchester, the guy that Keemstar wrongly labeled a pedo years ago in order to take another dig at the man, also taking digs at ContraPoints again because she's butthurt they made fun of her, and would fail at convincing people that Ethan and Hila were taking clips out of context when covering Vosh. She would even show Ethan supposedly being a hypocrite as well when he was allegedly caught looking at an underage cartoon picture. I just want to say I thought she's hot, that's it. You didn't? She was like a lady, she's not a little girl. She's like a full blown 17. Fuck. But it's a cartoon. It's a car. I, I Despite making a video trying to call out Ethan for cutting context, Keffels ironically did so herself with that aforementioned clip. As a context to that, was reacting to a picture of Cora from the TV show The Legend of Cora, not knowing she's a teenager in the show. While now knowing she's a teenager makes what he said look a little bit weird, it makes sense why he assumed she was an adult, as one can say she looks around her early 20s and it wouldn't sound like a stretch. You know, unlike the person she's been trying her hardest to defend who was caught with something that clearly looks like children, but I digress. She would even bring up the Chris Tyson stuff as it wasn't mainstream news yet about how they used to buy stuff from Shadman in the past and has said some disturbing things as well, implying Ethan is a hypocrite because he dismissed the evidence because he likes them. Since he dismissed all of this and began praising Chris. I like Chris, he's a, or uh, sorry, she, fuck, I'm sorry. She's a great person. Um, I've spoken with her and I really like her. I've met her a few times. She would also go on to imply their clothing brand Teddy Fresh was made using child labor in sweatshops showing a whole bunch of articles she looked up to set this up without providing any evidence that their company does that before ending it off in a very disingenuous way. This isn't definitive proof that Teddy Fresh is made with child labor, but the evidence suggests that the likelihood of this being true is high. And if it is, arguments which attempt to make people just as disgusted with child sexual exploitation as they are with child sweatshop labor would definitely be bad for his brand in his business. This could explain his hyperfixation on this specific comparison, although this may be giving him too much credit for having thought all of this through. Despite trying to tarnish the H3 podcast name, people saw how manipulative Keffels was being with their coverage, as at the very end right there of her trying to imply their products were made using child labor was just a failed attempt to make it seem they're bad people. She came off as someone trying to pin whatever might stick against them, and in turn showed people the level she was willing to stoop down to in order to make someone look bad, twisting things out of context or talking about issues that she herself knows are much deeper and much more complex just to try and get a leg up on him. Ethan would react to the video on the podcast, and only part of any interest would be where he defend himself about the Chris Tyson stuff, saying how he literally just learned about their past with Shadman on air that very day, and again, this news was just barely hitting circles by the time 2024 started, so it is very believable. I just found out about these, that was, these yeah, clips. Yeah, that was not even part of our conversation, research, yeah, yeah. anything. It was yeah. the first time we even heard about it. So she wants me to, on both hands, be quick to judge and also be careful to judge. <laughs> it would only get worse for Keffels from here on out as people end up finding out she followed a pedo on Twitter at one point in time. And while no one knows if it was someone who became one before she followed them or after she did, it didn't make her look any better given the circumstances. Mudahar, the Some Ordinary Gamer's YouTube channel, will come out and say he's looking into her now, and Keffels will start to antagonize him soon after she was made aware of his Twitter post. Mudahar would reply back saying he's more interested in the allegations of her scamming people out of $100,000 given no one still knows where exactly the money has gone to given the human rights complaint again was for free. She would then change her tone and start to go after him for using Kiwi Farms as a source for his content, continuing to perpetuate this narrative as this is the only thing she has to try and attack him online over the very middling results. She'd also retweet a post showing a meme of someone approving giving children HRT, which given her pass of promoting the DIY HRT site that sold the product for children to keep away from their parents behind their backs, was certainly a hill to die on. Keffels would then say the supposed things the funds were used for, saying it was for moving, recouping losses, and legal expenses she supposedly filed, saying she never specified the type of action she would take in the GoFundMe and that she'd been doing everything by the book. On Discord a few days prior, she would say she'd probably be in a legal battle till 2026, going on to say that she wants to settle out of court, get the police to apologize, and get them to pay for her rehab. You know, the rehab that happened because of her own drug usage after she got the 100k to use against them in court. Not because of anything the police did to her, but again, I digress. On February 18th, just a few days after defending Vosh on her channel, Keffels will all of a sudden change her tone and start to trash on the man, saying she still doesn't believe he's a pedo but that he's extremely reckless and the old info about her is starting to be talked about online again. She would then try to put the blame on Vosh for her current situation, despite her being the one who inserted herself into everything to begin with in one of the biggest examples of a lack of self-awareness on the internet. 
She would then start to say how Vash would have jumped on the opportunity to shit on someone if it were to happen to them and how this is how the internet works. Before going on a rant about how Vash runs his stuff and how it's all a show and not actual serious political debates or anything like that in the entire industry. Officially accepting the fact she just burned her bridge with her last connection to any mainstream content creator in the sphere on the internet. Keffels would announce her leave from Twitter on February 19th, saying that she was getting a bunch of death threats and stuff of similar nature, blaming Elon Musk for what she's currently facing on the site she called it quits for the time being. She would then head over to Blue Sky to continue her social media escapades, talking about the transphobic harassment she dealt with on Twitter and how they reinstated the owner of Kiwi Farms on the site for example. She would notably start up a cover story about her time sponsoring a DIY HRT site, saying that all she did was give him 500 a month and that was as far as her involvement went with the place, despite everyone knowing by this point she was very close to the owner Bob posting before she started to sponsor them and their products selling HRT to children behind their parents' backs. That's also not to mention the infamous post where she admits she's sponsoring the site specifically for people underage to access them, showing her again trying to change the story hoping people forgot given it's been so long. The Quartering would finally get his revenge as someone on his news publication website, The Publico, would write up an article talking about how Keffel sponsored a DIY HRT site for minors in the past. And just under 10 hours after announcing she would quit Twitter, she would post on a site responding to some random comment, showing just how addicted she is to social media and the internet. Chris Chow will also be seen reposting someone saying how he doesn't like Keffels, showing that even the lowest of the low can't stand her in the way she's like online. Keffels will end up nuking her public discord due to the new wave of detractors coming her way to harass her and her fans, but she would get back to streaming once more. That which isn't too interesting in fairness, though does include a very funny moment when she was reacting to a video. Uh, I don't want to be a sex educator, I just don't want to give kids in school. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. What do you mean, Taylor? You totally understand. Why are you agreeing? She would then give her public take on Aaron Bushnell, the guy who set himself on fire in Israel to protest the war, saying how he was trying to bring awareness to the cause and whatnot. Of course, behind the scenes, she was criticizing what he did because it would achieve nothing in the long run, showing how she tends to keep her true opinion to herself in an attempt for positive online engagement after the Vosh stuff. Now we've been talking about Bob posting in a DIY HRT site every now and then for the past two years since my coverage started. And if you remember, Kevil said that Bob posting aka Chloe left the internet due to harassment after the H3 podcast she did with them way back in September 2022. After I appeared on the H3 podcast, the harassment ramped up insanely against her because Ethan and I talked about the DIY HRT directory. Chloe would then hand off the site to an unknown group of people and since then hasn't been heard from. Well, despite Keffel saying she left because of harassment, it was actually because back on February 14th, 2020, Chloe, whose real name is Wei Sedong, would actually try to rob a bank in her city of Edmonton, located in Alberta, Canada, and would be declared guilty for their act on March 13th, 2023. While it's currently unknown how long they'll be in jail for, it's just hilarious to see the real reason for them leaving the internet wasn't because of harassment, but because of criminal activity in their impending court date instead. We also technically don't know if Keffels is lying again or if Zedong never told her what was going on, but that doesn't matter much at this point as that can be speculated on for hours. On the same day the news about Bob posting going to prison came out, Keffels will upload her second video on the Scared Awake channel, which is her jumping very late onto the Russian sleep experiment story, getting a paltry number of views in the process. A few days later on March 3rd, she would upload a since privated video called I Can't Do This Anymore, in which she complains for 8 minutes about how she can't handle live streaming anymore because of the harassment, how her life sucks. Again, after getting herself involved in the Voss stuff and defending him for having naked drawings of children before backtracking. It's not exactly an interesting watch at all, but what was interesting was her stating why she talks so slow. That being because she now has psychomotor retardation, something that she attributes to her depression but is also a known symptom of coke withdrawal as well. YouTuber Repzion would say that Kiwi Farms is right in the comments on that video, and Keffels would see this and immediately jump at an attempt to victimize herself on Twitter after seeing someone with over 700,000 subscribers dare say something good about the website she hates the most. She would even make a whole also now privated video bitching about him which wasn't of any interest in this attempt to play victim some more. Despite forever tarnishing her name on the internet just a month prior, Kevils will decide to take it a bit further by making a video within the hour talking about the news of former YouTuber James Summerton apparently ending it all, an extremely poor taste example of her jumping on a sensitive story without even having the facts right as no one knew if he was truly gone or not. She would eventually change the title after people started to bash her online for clickbaiting someone's apparent demise and getting even more hate her way. Also going on a schizo post in her discord server either trying to be funny or off a pill, I can't really tell anymore. She'd also change the title of her I Can't Take It Anymore video on two occasions around this time as well, showing to everyone she was clearly not in the right mental space yet continued to stay online despite everything going down around her. All this controversy would cause her to get her main Keffel's Twitter account suspended for a moment, 
in which she would start to post on her alt account Chili Dog Isis, would this be a major blow to her illustrious online career? This wasn't it, however, as on March 10th, 2024, she'd upload the video I Changed My Mind About Vosh, a video that is surely something to behold, alright. In said video, she would go on and throw her closest friend Simpster under the bus because apparently she only inserted herself into everything after he decided to talk about it first. I wasn't planning on weighing in. None of this was my problem. But then my friend Tipster decided to call out Ethan Klein on Twitter for how he covered the entire situation that happened with Bosch. And then when Ethan Klein responded, I was like, okay, I have two friends now who are getting put on blast by a really large content creator, I decided that I was going to, I was going to get into the mud because I care about my friends. I don't want to see my friends getting attacked. And that was a huge mistake. She was going to say how she doesn't like Vosh anymore because the mistake he made was easily avoidable in the first place. Going on to show him apologizing to her in text, but not wanting to talk on call. Before going on to say that she feels she's being unrightfully punished, mind you, again, for inserting herself into something she wasn't a part of and defending Vosh for having NSFW lolly and drawn bestiality images. Because I feel like I just got punished for trying to be a good friend to someone. I just, I feel hurt. I feel hurt. I don't want to defend this guy anymore. I just don't want people to say the word keffles and immediately associated in their heads with Bosch anymore. She would then end it off saying that Tipster should have done better and that she loves drama and making videos but hates being part of it, yet goes on to say she'll continue to make the very content that gets her into so much heat on the internet to begin with. And I would be lying if I said that I don't like drama. I love slop. I'm a slopmeister. I am 100% the operator of a slopateria. But I don't want to be directly in the slop. And I'm not going to stop doing commentary on various happenings around the internet. But I don't want to be directly involved in it. Especially when it has nothing to do with me. So if anything, that's my big takeaway from this situation. Keffels had soon realized this was a massive mistake as just under two hours later, she would private the video on YouTube, going on to private both her main Twitter and widely known alt account on the site as well. She would say in her Discord server she took the video down because of Vosh fans, and after some nonsensical arguing, she would have a mental break when chatting with fans, eventually leaving her own server altogether as people wondered what was going on. Meanwhile, someone named Maeve would start to try and go after Mudahar for his assumed future usage of Kiwi Farms to make his Keffels video to try and start a Twitter war, all while being a friend of hers who was directly talking to her in DMs after this mental breakdown, eventually getting her to join back her Discord server as she complained about people re-uploading the Vosh video but not being able to do anything about it as she already deleted it off the site by this point. On March 12th, Keffels would then upload a new video called the Vosh video, a video where she talks about a recently deleted Vosh video. This video is more the same and it's pretty obvious this was just an attempt to take back what she said in her last video that made her look bad, such as now saying good things about Tipster for example. Absolutely no hate to Tipster. I love Tipster. Tipster is my big bro. He's a really cool dude. Honestly, I didn't need to make this video when I was so tilted. I feel like I just came off like really salty about what happened and I just kind of redirected that onto people who honestly had nothing to do with it. Keffels didn't seem to be as calm as she sounded in that video behind the scenes, however, as the very next day she would take down all videos on all three channels she owned, with people wondering if the Chronicles of Keffels was finally over after the past two years of major controversy. It expectedly wasn't over as just two days later she'd reinstate all the videos on all her channels like nothing ever happened, even going on to unprivate her Twitter account as well. She would delete the drama channels on her Discord server that same day, showing that maybe after many failed attempts at saying she would stay out of drama would she finally hold her own word. This would expectedly fall apart as Willie Mac show would show how he paid for Keffel's Patreon but she forced it to cancel after figuring out who he was, with him still getting info he needed. She would then try to make him out to be some sort of stalker and creep for trying to dig up info on both her and DMs and behind her back, with Willie saying how all she needs to do is show where the GoFundMe went, and people would remind others that she did the same exact thing with Soul Bunny back in the day when trying to get info on them. She would admit she was in the wrong for trying to stalk Soul Bunny back in the day and is sorry for what she did, but it's obvious she's only doing this because if she doesn't, she's just a blatant hypocrite trying to get mad at Willie Mac show doing what she did to other people. People even point out she's still a doxer as she launched up an Overwatch 2 stream with the name of the internet artist Stone Toss in the title as he was doxed just a few days prior as well. Around this time, she'd also start talking about how she lost a significant amount of years within the past month and a half. Tipster would also celebrate her birthday and continue to try and get in her pants with the weirdest video I've seen in a while. And if I had to watch the whole thing, so do you, so have fun. <laughs> Happy birthday. Cupcakes. Dreamers. Pinata. Ba 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 ba
Chuck Lara. Happy birthday. Chuck Lara. Happy birthday. DMs is also leak out of her trying to manipulate an old debate she did badly on in the stream in order to poison the well in the intro. Which to be fair, plenty of channels do this to hype up their intros. It's just funny coming from her given her history. On March 20th, a Twitter user named Pam would come out and say that they were able to get Keffel's Bitcoin and Ethereum crypto wallets after pretending to want to donate to her through crypto. This is her new address that she set up in order to get the donation. And this address is interesting because there was a transaction that happened just hours before to this other address in the blue and on the right here. Now while we don't technically know who owns the address that Keffels is sending money to, when taking a look at the transaction history there's a noticeable gap between February 20th 2023 to February 22nd 2024, dates that just happened to coincide with Keffels admitting she was on drugs due to the stress and the recent Voss situation where she defended him. It seems suspicious that Keffels is giving money to an account that just so happened to be tied to two important dates in her online career, and the account will continue to make transactions as time progressed, eventually stopping altogether on March 27th 2024. It's worth pointing out that this account could very well just be a random person as there's no actual proof that it's her just to make it crystal clear to y'all so I'm not accusing it of being hers or anything like that. So for anybody interested to investigate deeper, be my guest. The next day she would post a tweet about how she's not doing good and getting new meds due to stress and whatnot, saying how it's hard to be vulnerable online about her mental health because people use it to attack her and her well-being, saying she has a lot to work on. She would end it off replying to someone about how she doesn't want to stay quiet so she can keep them in the loop, but soon after posting this update she would delete these tweets entirely for one reason or another. Keffels would then go oddly silent after this, not posting on her Twitter for over a month, something that is very out of character for her. Nothing interesting would go down during this break save for one piece of info coming out, with that being confirmation on April 4th that Bew is indeed dead, wrapping up that story once and for all. On 420 she would be seen getting rid of a handful of videos off her main channel during the break, and on May 9th she would come back to the internet and already planning to get back to streaming. She would talk about how the internet has been bad for her mental health and she can't handle thousands of people going after her, causing more people to get in her case again as it was her fault for inserting herself into the Vosh situation and initially defending him in the first place. Keffels would vow to never use social media again soon after all this, and just a few hours later would go on Twitter to start talking trash about Brianna Wu again because she can't control herself whatsoever. That lack of self-control become evident in this since deleted post of her losing her mind on the timeline again, showing everyone that she is truly terminally online and will never leave so long as no one takes the internet away from her. In other news, a UK exclusive seller on the DIY HRT site named Vanna Pharma would get caught by the UK government itself on April 25th, with the future of people running that site not looking the best for them. Also, I found this image of Otokonoko Pharmaceuticals changing up their packaging apparently, but I wasn't able to verify if this was Photoshop or not, so if anyone knows the truth about this, just say it in the comments below. All in all, things seem to be getting back to normal for Keffels after this whole Vosh fiasco, but that would shift suddenly as on May 11th, Mudahar would finally announce the upcoming release of his video on her in just a few hours, and just a few minutes later, Keffels would post a meme on Twitter as a sign to show she was still online and watching. What transpired next isn't exactly shocking, but man, it is still something surely to behold alright in this entire mess we've been through so far. On May 11th, 2024, Mudahar would release Why Keffels is a Complete Fraud, an hour and a half dive into the story of Keffels now being spoken about from one of the most influential people on the internet. His video is basically my old one plus the new stuff we've been seeing in this current upload, but since the massive content creator is now talking about it, the news has spread around the mainstream public as this madness will hit much wider circles in the process. The biggest bombshell from this video however was a leaked DM from a group chat on November 30th 2022 just two months into her GoFundMe going live. Keffels would talk about how she feels bad watching herself spend a GoFundMe money, with the most important part there being at the very bottom where she says she'll get cancelled if people find out what she really used the money on. This shows that she was probably spending the money on a lot of stuff like furniture, clothing, and helping friends out, meaning that she's implying here that she is using the money improperly rather than keeping the words used it for mostly legal stuff. Some more leaks will show Keffels bragging to someone named Cherry that she got the docs of bad empanada and says it's all just a game to her as she calls herself insane, with another person named Second Thought being caught in this as well. She would open up how she got his info and would even go on to say she wants to retire from streaming and become a PI for the purposes of doxing people, showing just how malicious of a person she is. Keffel's response to this would be to lie about Mudahar not respecting her pronouns when he indeed was, saying that the drawing of her is transphobic, and basically trying to imply he's transphobic himself to no avail. The artist who drew the thumbnail was known on Twitter for drawing people ugly as that was his whole gimmick as you can see right here, and ironically enough Keffel's herself had even used his art in a Vosh video at one point in time. 
Whether the artist is a piece of shit or not does not matter in this case because she was clearly trying to use guilt by association tactics against Mudahar. As if she didn't do something far worse by associating with the DIY HRT site promoting children to take life-changing drugs behind their parents' backs, but I digress. Since then, some people have tried to push this notion that Mudahar is transphobic because of this. But it's pretty obvious it's just bad-faced people trying to defend Keffels for Twitter brownie points as they can't think outside their own cultish side of the internet. Keffels would be seen hiding a message quoting that GoFundMe money stuff which was funny to see. And a screenshot of a Discord server including Tipster and other friends of hers would be leaked showing them organizing information on a handful of their detractors throughout the past two years. Speaking of Tipster, he would delete 24 million views off his channel around this time as well, showing that he was going for a full relaunch of his online career after everything that had gone down. An alleged, and I really want to put emphasis on alleged, revenue sheet of Keffel's income will leak out, showing what she allegedly made between May 2022 to July 2023. Again, this is an alleged revenue sheet of Keffel's as there's no proof this is actually related to her, but I figured to show y'all this as it might become useful info in the future, but given there is no hard evidence actually tying this to her whatsoever, take this with a huge grain of salt. Keffels would do her first stream in a while in mid-May, with her mostly just gaming but saying that she doesn't plan to respond as she's quote unquote done with drama and that she just wants to play video games from now on. I'm not planning on making any sort of response because I don't think I owe anyone a response. When I say I'm done with drama, I legitimately mean it. I don't care about any of this shit. Some schizo redditor will make an insanely long and stupid post saying that Mudahar and his wife are an Aryan couple, but because they're so deranged, the only thing worth doing here is laughing at their face for this. Indians such as Muda were immensely desirable in the Third Reich. <laughs> A mod of Keffels end up confirming that she indeed leaks messages out of context to manipulate narratives, which while it was already pretty known to anyone looking into her, the fact her own mods are aware of this and are admitting it shows just how much she does this, and this is only the stuff that's made its way to the public, mind you. On May 25th, Keffels had confirmed on Discord that the legal stuff was still moving forward and that it would take a while on stuff we already know about, showing that she's still working with Justin Anus Men and that she's still on hiatus due to everything that's gone down recently, saying she'll get back to streaming next month. On June 22nd, she would start to tweet again to test the waters and see how people react, but it seemed a lot of them were still calling her a scammer for the GoFundMe fiasco she got herself into. She would also start talking trash about Nick Rakita after it came out that his 9-year-old child tested positive for coke, which while it's pretty insane and that whole Rakita situation is its own thing, she's the last person to be talking about giving drugs to children. On June 21st, Keffel's a message in Catboy Ranch for the first time in a while to see how people are doing, and on July 3rd, 2024, she would announce her plans for her official comeback to the internet content creation space. Meanwhile, the Patreon for her main channel was starting to fall off more and more as people realized just how bad of a person she is, and on July 12th she would vent about how she's been dealing with people stalking her and that she can't deal with the online stuff like she used to, even saying she was diagnosed with PTSD due to her mental health spiraling out of control. She would talk a bit about the first attempted assassination on former President Donald Trump when that went down, and interestingly enough, would promote the DIY HRT site again after some stuff went down in the UK having to do with laws involving transgender people. On July 18th, 2024, Keffels would get back into live streaming for the first time in months, with Tipster immediately hopping in and dropping 10 bucks away to nobody's surprise. The live stream itself was simple enough as it was mainly just her talking with their fans and such, but there was one part in particular where she talks about the GoFundMe money and what she has this to say about it. All of the money that I received went towards either legal funds, it went towards relocating, it went towards getting new gear after the cops seized my stuff. It went towards paying employees when I had to take a significant hiatus from work. And even money that I didn't need, I ended up donating to other GoFundMes. But I don't care what people think about me. As you just heard there, she admitted to using some of her GoFundMe's money on other people's GoFundMe's, and if you remember, her GoFundMe was said to be used for legal fees and stuff to help her move and such. She just admitted to misappropriating at least part of her GoFundMe money, and this time instead of it being mostly based in speculation and implication, she said it herself on camera for the world to see. Despite this attempt at a comeback, Keffel's channel was doing abysmal by daily content livestream standards, as it was very clear that a lot of people had jumped ship and moved on from her entirely. In late July, some DMs leak out a leftist streamer Xanderhal from back in December 2023 when he was crashing out in the DMs of Cherry saying that he wanted to kill Keffels and was demanding her address. With Keffels understandably responding saying this is all insane, as let's face it, this is pretty deranged no matter how someone tries to put it. She would end up watching a stream that night going over this situation for her viewers to see, but in this stream she would drop the bombshell of the century. Like that is just 
very mentally unwell behavior to be so deeply invested in all of this shit online that just does not matter. For that reason, sad to say, sometime next year is going to be my last stream. That's right. She would officially announce that she was going to quit streaming once and for all, saying how to hate mobs demoralize her, despite, you know, being someone who would literally do the same to others online, but I digress. Keffels would make her final Twitter post telling everybody that this is it and that she enjoyed raising money for charity and the good memories, but after everything that's happened in her life, it was time for her to move on as her real life was thriving and in a much better place than it was when she was a content creator. She would say the same in Catboy Ranch and specify that she's still going to be around on the internet, but that her content creator days are officially over for anyone who was confused about what was going on. She would even confirm it was her psychiatrist who was the one who made the call for her as she had a breakdown after the Xanderhal stream, which to be fair, was a good call on their end all things considered. On August 19th, Keffels would show back up on Catboy Ranch for a moment and talk about how she got a job at a local Italian cafe and that life's been getting better for her. And on September 2nd, her Twitter account would officially hit the sub 100k follower mark, showing that her internet notoriety is slowly coming to an end here. At one point around early to mid-September, she'd also black out her entire Twitter profile, again showing to everyone that she's serious about moving on being an internet content creator once and for all. This entire dive into Keffel's short-lived yet volatile internet career for the past two and a half years was one of the most interesting cases I've ever covered. Never have I seen someone who was so blatantly malicious or their actions get even a small following going online, though it became obvious this was only on Twitter as a reception outside that website was all but negative. You've seen it yourself here. She wants to dox anyone who she wants to and has shown that she's willing to do so. And the Voss situation was a final nail in the coffin as it showed she's willing to defend potential pedos simply if she likes them personally. She built her career off hostility and lying, so the fact it fell apart just as quickly as it rose isn't too surprising in the end here. Now I don't normally like to brag or anything similar like that, but I knew that my first video on Keffels two years ago would age well because it was the first deep dive video going over her history in a concise and easy to digest matter. And guess what? That ended up being a vital piece in people learning just how deranged of a person she is as I know plenty of people have seen it from all corners of the internet behind the scenes. The fact she ended up misappropriating her GoFundMe money for her own selfish pleasures isn't too surprising. I'm more surprised she thought she could hide that from people, especially after the whole drug situation that went down. She caused her own downfall too. She didn't have to misappropriate the funds. She didn't have to start defending Vosh. And she didn't have to continue to support children getting body altering drugs behind her parents' backs. Her attempts at pink pilling children should be a lesson here that there are a lot of very dangerous people online, even those that seem to have a big following. I don't expect Keffels to try to make another comeback to any sort of internet career after this, because the moment she tries to get back to it, people will immediately go at her for all the heinous things she's done, and understandably so. Maybe she'll get back on Twitter one day, but I'm not too sure given she seems a lot happier offline now. So for all intents and purposes, it's safe to say that the Chronicles of Keffels is finally over, at least for now. We still have that whole legal situation with the London, Ontario Police Department, but I'm not expecting anything else damning to come out about Keffels herself until that stuff is resolved in the next few years. So if anything, it seems that part 3 will be more so an epilogue rather than a full-fledged deep dive. But hey, maybe some more crazy stuff will come out, who really knows? But for now, I think I'm just gonna chill out and relax for a bit now that we can safely say this entire story has been told from beginning to end.